This is Donna. I'm Serena. And we are the Magic Hour Cross Stitch Supplies team. And welcome to Happy Stitching. This is our podcast where we talk about all kinds of stuff about cross stitch. So we're going to get right to it today. And we're going to be talking about bobbinating. I don't know if that's a real word or not, but that's the one we always use when we talk about um, taking the th the, your thread flosses and putting them on the little plastic bobbins that are so popular. And as a matter of fact, I have a dozen or so flosses that I'm just um, putting on bobbins today. So that's why uh, we're going to talk about that. I'm, But first, let's talk about what our current projects are. I'm working still on my black work sal. That's what these flosses are going to be for. I have to confess, we were hanging floss in the shop yesterday. We just got in another big order from DMC, uh, of DMC flosses, and uh, the colors are just so beautiful. <laughs> That's one of the best things about our job. So I just had to bring a few home. Not that I don't have plenty of flosses at home, but there are just some perfect colors. And in all fairness, once in a while we get a wonky one where there's the thread pulled or something, and or it's got scrunched up in the box, and it doesn't really not going to really work for selling it so I just bring it home so, so I have a big handful to bobbinate and I'm going to use them on my black work project Serena what are you working on I am currently I finished my heart hands for that family friend of ours so so I'm going to turn that into a little pouch probably Saturday yeah tomorrow yeah yeah and um so now I'm back to my book project which is uh, tw one over one on 28 count opalescent. Uh, the pattern is from Hall Stitch. So, yeah. Hall Stitch from Etsy. Etsy. Okay. So uh, that would be a place to look if you want to have a look at that pattern. And now your fabric is opalescent what? Lugana. 28 count opalescent Lugana. And I have to tell you, it is gorgeous. It's a very, very pretty uh, fabric. And the pattern is all rainbow colors and swirls. and Well, oh, the pattern gorgeous. had an option for the rainbow, and it also had an option for just one color. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you picked the rainbow because it's really pretty. Me too. It's really well variegated. Yes, it is. Uh, okay, so let's get right to the bobbinating. Oh, you, you can see pictures of the projects uh, we, that we talked about in our last episode. If you go to our Facebook page and search podcasts, um, you will find our uh, episode six has the, uh, I posted the pictures of that pro those projects that we discussed. Can you search within a Facebook page or do you have to search all of Facebook at once? Like, isn't it like a Google search? You know what? That's a good question. <laughs> but you know what we can do is post them into the files section. Okay. That's a, a good thought. I will do that. I will post all the podcasts into the files section. Okay. So you'll be able to find them there and the photos that uh, pertain to them. I don't know how I'll, I'll figure that out somehow. Anyway, uh, the best way to find something is to look for it. So I'll do that. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to move on here. I've got all this big pile of flosses to bobbinate. So I've got, I prefer plastic bobbins. I like paper bobbins. Okay, why do you like paper bobbins? They hold the thread better, and I don't use a floss box very often. I usually just use, like, a little bag. Like, if it's a big project, like that uh, Disney pattern I'm working on, uh -huh. I use a floss box, but it's very rare, and I... I don't know, I just prefer paper bobbins. Huh. I know the slots sometimes don't hold very well. No, they don't. Those ones you got from Amazon are terrible. Yeah, they were. The slots were really wide. I had to put a bit of masking tape on and then slice it to make it usable, which is not really very practical. So uh, these ones, I just grabbed a package from the shop. Um, I know, I have bobbins at home. <laughs> but I right now I'm still recovering from my surgery and I can't go down to where all my... Uh, my stash is to look for these things so I feel I'm justified and it was only a little handful so anyway so I I've got a pile of bobbins pile of threads so the first thing I'm going to do is 
I like to mark the number on my uh, bobbin with masking tape. So a tiny little smidgen of masking tape. I know you can hear the tape ripping, <laughs> but well, that's okay because that's what I'm doing is I'm ripping tape in tiny little, little pieces. So I can just stick it on the corner of my bobbin and then I can write the number, the DMC number on the corner. Now I like the masking tape because several reasons. For one thing, it holds the ink really well. So when I write on it the number, the number does not come off. It doesn't rub off or fade over time because sometimes, you know, it might be years before you use that floss again. So you want the uh, the writing to have some staying power. And on writing in ink on the masking tape really does that. So I'm just going to write my number on here. Now I have a system that I work, worked out over time for my own personal stash. So when, um, when it's a DMC floss, I just write the number. If it's an anchor floss, I put A in the number. If I don't know what it is, which happens sometimes, I'm because you're always getting floss from thrift stores. I do. I haven't for a long time. It was a great way to build my stash. But now I have a bunch of flosses, and a lot of them I don't even know if they're color fast. But anyway, that's a exactly. problem for another day. Uh, so I'd, anyway, I just put a question mark, and if there's a number, I put it on anyway. Okay, so I, my bobbin is ready. It's got the little tag and the number. So I just pull off the two bands on the oh I checked the number again yes that's the number and then when you hold your floss you can see that there's uh it makes a kind of like an eye almost like on a needle at each end so if you can get your hand through that eye and open it up it makes like a circle and if you can do that completely uh, with no loops that on the wrong side so to speak it'll unwind beautifully and then you just roll it around in your hands a little bit and then pull on the loose end that's on the outside. And, and I just unwind the whole thing into like in a loose pile on my lap. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've got number 318. It's a beautiful bluish purple. Oh, uh, that's definitely a gray. There's no, and no really? universe is that purple. That's definitely I, gray. You know, we often see colors quite differently. This is gray, this is blue. This is a blue gray or a purple gray to my eyes. Okay, so now I'm just going to wind it around on my bobbin. That's, you know, pretty straightforward. Now try to do it evenly. Just if you have ever used sewing machine, think about how the machine winds bobbins. It kind of does it, you know, um, goes slowly up and down and up and down the bobbin as it winds it on. So that's kind of one you, what, how you want to do it so it comes off easily. Well, the bo well the sewing machine does that is because the way the thread is wound onto the spool, it yeah. naturally does that. Yeah, but it's on the spool that way because it that's how because it comes if you off had it, easily. Because if you had it all in one layer, it would be ridiculous. Well, yeah, of course, but I mean you don't start at one end and fill that end up and then move to the middle and fill oh, the middle okay. up and like that. You want to do it across and back and across and back so it comes off easily. Right. Okay, so it's I've wound it all on, and now I can just lock it in. Now these bobbins are pretty good. The slot is quite small and it holds it tightly. I don't. If it's a little bit loose, uh, sometimes if you wind it in a figure eight at the end, it will hold it tightly enough not to be a, a bother. But bobbins are bobbins. Sometimes they come unwound. You just have to wind the loose thread back on. Okay, there's one. So I like to bobinate. I like to have a little floss box with all my colors. Um, I like to organize my flosses into floss boxes uh, with, you know, from 1 to 3890, I think is the last highest number with the bright colors. You mean in the box? I, not all in one box. I've got dozens of boxes. No, no, no. I mean the ones. Yes, the ones in the li in the box. Those can be bought separately now. We oh. offer th we offer them individually. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're they're in the shop individually. So the thirty eight eighty plus uh, used to be sold only in a like a set uh, that came 
I think there's 16 colors or eight colors and you get two of each. 18, I think. Well, anyway, there, it came there in a set, but now you can buy them individually. But anyway, that's how I like to organize my floss. And, and then when I need a specific number, I look in my cupboard and they're all standing there like books on a shelf. And I just pull out the one box I need, which is clearly labeled, and look, there it is. It makes it very easy to kit projects. Yes, it is. But I, I imagine a lot of people store their floss that way. Probably a lot do, yeah. Uh, but there are other ways to uh, store your floss and also to uh, have it ready for your project. So some people just leave it on the skein. They don't do anything. And apparently, rumor says, that if you pull the loose end that sticks out of the bottom, it's supposed to come out cleanly, and you just pull it gently, and you get out as much as you want, and the rest stays in place. Now, I personally have not had very much luck with that. That's what DMC says to do. Anchor does the same, but uh, for some reason, every time I try it, I end up with a big knot, uh, like a knot the size of a basketball, so <laughs> I don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> but for some people, it works really well, and then you have the number on there already, and, you know, it's a convenient size, just lay them in a nice little rack or something, uh, and that that's another way to do it. Isn't there, like, a, a thing that you, like, wrap around and it's kind of long? Yes, those are called stitch bows. Mm. And uh, those have were really popular. They're still popular, uh, but they were more popular in the past. There's lots of options now. But th they're basically a very big bobbin, is ah. pretty much. But they're the size of, like, the length of a piece of paper. And then the, you put them into binders. So you ha instead of floss boxes with small small bobbins, you have uh, bigger bobbins in a binder, and you stand those up on your shelf like books. Right. So that's another way. It's just it's similar to this, but slightly modified. And then uh, there are other people who like to use the floss bags, and they come in all different kinds. Uh, you don't even have to buy specific bags for floss. You can buy any kind of like clear poly bag. But don't the floss away bags come with a little hole so you can put them on like a binder ring? Yes, they do. So you can buy a big box of cheap bags at a dollar shop and, and a hole punch and save yourself a bunch of money. And you still have to label them, of course. I would still go with the masking tape. It's cheap and easy to use. Plus, it comes off. When your bobbin's empty, it comes right off, and you can use it for a different color if you want to. And it would be the same with your floss away bag. So you can um, do it that way. And then uh, you could, so if you're using the floss away bags, you get, say, you know, this bunch will go, say, 1 to 50 or 1 to 100 or 150, whatever. Put those on one ring and label it, and you hang it up somewhere. So, and just proceed that way. And then when you're kidding up a project, you just collect up all your flosses and put those on a ring. So you'd need a bunch of box, uh, bags and a bunch of uh, binder ri size rings. So that's also a nice, neat, easy to use way. And you don't spend a lot of time bobbinating when you're trying to start your new project. For me, I, that would be a, a minus, because I love bobbinating. I do not. I really like it. I find it very soothing and very relaxing. So it's just kind of gently turning, and you can watch TV, and it's really easy. And I like putting, you know, things in order. So putting things with numbers on stuff like that, that's right up my alley. So it really works for me. So Serena... Yes. How do you, you said you like to keep your, you, you have bobbins, of like course. I have, but you put them in little, yeah, because you use stuff from my stash. <laughs> so your stuff is bobbinated. Well, no, when I get floss, I get you to bobbinate it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with that. You use all the stash you want, honey. And then you put your, <coughs> your flosses into a little bag, and then yes. you just keep that with your project. So yes. So that's pretty efficient, because the box can be a little bulky if you have a lot. 
but you know if you have a lot of flosses you'll want to take it around with you or keep it with your project at least yeah because i use you can get them at michael's i'm pretty sure you used to be able to get them other places too but those tables they're little plastic tables are like i don't know what you call them oh yeah with the pockets on each side yeah, there's a pocket on each side, and it's just a little plastic, like a play table. It goes over over your lap when you're sitting. Then you have a nice, neat little uh, convenient table space plus two pockets to put all your, your goodies in. Yeah, so I'll put my floss in the little pocket, my pencil or marker in the round pocket, because I have a round pocket on uh -huh. mine, and then my project in the big pocket, and then it's ready to put away. Like, it's very self-contained yes but yeah. with a floss box i wouldn't be able to do that because the big part the flat part of course holds my pattern and right. the color keys yeah well that works really well uh i have a different setup but it's kind of complex so we can cover that another day that one might be better for a video yeah i think so i think that would have to take a video that would be a fun video to do though uh anyway so uh, i think that's all we're going to talk about for bobbins but if you have another solution i would love to hear it so please visit us on facebook and post a picture of your floss storage uh solution your uh, whatever personalized idea you have i'd love to see it and uh see some pictures so take a good picture and send it along that would be great do you have anything else to say on the subject of bobbins on the subject of bobbins um why do you like plastic bobbins? I don't like the way the corners fold down on the paper ones. So it's not that you like plastic bobbins. You don't like paper bobbins and plastic is the only alternative. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's mo mostly the reason. I know some people even just cut their own bobbins out of car uh, cereal boxes and stuff. And that works too. And if they're weak, then they put two together and wind the floss around. Yeah, so there, there's lots of ways around it. If you want to use paper, use paper. It works for you know. It's easy to write on. You don't need to fuss around with the, with the masking tape. Yeah. So yep, that's another good solution, and really cheap. Cereal boxes are free basically, well, and eco-friendly. <laughs> well, you have to pay for the cereal. Yeah, but you get the cereal for the bonus. I don't think you could call it buying cross-stitch supplies, though. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Okay. Well, we, we're going to just have uh, one question today. It's from Chuck in Toronto. And his wife is having a birthday coming up, and he wants to know what would be a good uh, gift for a stitcher. So she's been stitching for a while, so she has all the usual things. She has good scissors, and she has a Q-snap, and like that sort of thing. So um, what would be a good gift for a stitcher like that? So I was thinking about this and I think uh, one of the tools that I have that I find invaluable for both for pattern designing and when I'm stitching, when I want to match up colors or uh, if I'm you know, going my own way in a pattern and I want to do some color changes or something like that, I have a floss card uh, with actual floss samples in it and the new version has the 1 to 35s and it also tells you which ones have versions of satin and uh, metallics and you know all of those I thought it only told you which ones had pearl cotton no know. it also has satin and, and it has metallics. it has satin and metallics on a different thing on, on the on same a list on, in the back on, on, on a list in the back but it doesn't tell you on that little square chart next to each floss, it'll tell you it'll, if it comes in this size pearl cotton or this size pearl cotton. Because it lists the metallics with actual floss samples. But it doesn't tell you... Yes. Uh, you're quite right. There are little floss samples of the metallics. And satin. And the satins. And then there's a list on the back of all of the numbers, and there it'll tell you uh, what there is available in that number. So yes. if there's uh, regular cotton and light effect and satin and etoile, and like it tells you everything. So it's a really valuable tool, and um, the flosses are listed not by number. That little chart at the back is by number to make it easy to find. 
the flosses are actually organized by color families. So that makes it really easy to see if you need to, if you're out of a color and you want to just substitute, you only need five stitches and you don't want to buy a skein of floss for five stitches. Who wants to do that? So you can look at in the car in the chart and see if there's something that's close enough that you could sub. So something like that makes it really easy. There is a printed version as well, and it's not too bad, but it, it's not as accurate. It's not as accurate. I had a customer while uh, you were away come in and want to compare the uh, specifically. I think it was six seventy six. That's kind of the golden, light golden mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it was 676. In the actual card, like the actual floss card, to the actual floss to the printed card. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and we found, for at least that one, it was a lot more lemony than the actual mm. floss. So take what the printed ones say with a grain of salt, because I think that's uh, prone to the monitor problem when you're designing, mm. which is... Um, that not all monitors will show the same color. We also have that problem with hand dyes. Yes, that's quite true. So I, I'm always careful when I'm photographing my hand dyes to get true accurate color, but that doesn't mean that when it gets to the other end of somebody else's computer, it's still true actual colors. So uh, remember that when you're looking at fabrics and flosses and stuff. But anyway, uh, that would be a great gift item. Uh, Serena, do you have any ideas for a gift item? You for took my idea for a oh. gift item. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you can think of something else. Uh, um, hmm. Well, a hand-dyed fabric is a good one. We, talk, we just talked about it. Um, it you would kind of have to wheel your way in there to find out what kind of count she likes and you know, mm -hmm. you probably, if she's your wife, you probably know what color she likes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, finding out what count she likes might be, you know, you may have to do some digging in there, some surreptitious digging. But mm -hmm. uh, that That's a good idea, too. There are also, um, like, floss packs. You know, there are six packs of uh, specialized colors in, you know, in metallics and in satins and... You know, and some of them are colors that you can't get individually. Although that box that we talked about with the 3880 pluses, that's a good mm -hmm. idea. That's when, also a good when idea. The new colors. Yeah. Because those are hard to find. I think they came out in like 2012. Yeah, so. it's, it's been a while now, but uh, they're, they're really beautiful colors. Or the, there are some uh, gift tins with the 1 to 35s. Or a 12. And gift tins with the etoiles. A, a full set of etoiles would be a really nice present. We have one with uh, no tin, just the flosses, and you get a free pattern. So that makes a nice gift in itself. I, th I think we put it in a bag, too. Yeah, we put it yeah, in we, a cotton bag. Whoops, sorry. We, yeah, we well, make it. Bag. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we make it up into a nice, a nice gift. Uh, anyway, there are just some a few ideas. We also have gift certificates available on the website. So if you need some ideas for a stitcher friend, just uh, and you don't know which one would be the best way to go, just uh, drop us a line or text me or whatever, and uh, we can talk well, about it and find the best way. Well, put your phone number out in the podcast. No, I won't, but it is on the Facebook page. Right. So me you can message me from there. Uh, so if you want to do that, our Facebook is facebook.com slash magichourcrossstitch. So you can find uh, all kinds of information there. If you want to just email me, it's Donna at MagicHourCrossStitchSupplies.com. And our website is, uh, you guessed it, MagicHourCrossStitchSupplies.com. So there's lots of ways to contact us, and we would be glad to hear from you. And I need to put my ground guard on. This is there's extra fabric to grab in the net. Yeah, we're gonna do a video on the hoops and grind guards, so that also will go up into our files. So that's all for today. Thanks for joining us. And we always like to talk about cross stitch and all kinds of goodies about it. So I uh, hope that we'll see you on Facebook and join us again for the next episode that'll be coming up not too long. And until then, this is Donna. This is Serena. Thanks for joining us and happy stitching.